Thanks. Hello. Um, yeah. Hey. Hi, everyone. I hope you're all having a great GPC. I'm going to be talking about, you know, multimodality and also building out these, you know, chatbots and demos, which you might have seen. And if not, definitely go and take a look at all the demos we have. So I'm going to be borrowing a lot of slides from our you know, GPC keynote, which Jensen had presented on Monday. So this is the promise, right, of generative AI. What you can do is to go and take images, text, tables, videos, which, you know, all sorts of modalities, and you're able to understand and learn about these. And then you're also able to generate all sorts of different modalities. So what does it mean when people say to learn and understand, right? What deep learning is allowing you to do is to go and convert this into some sort of representation. That's essentially what it is. It's representation learning. And then using that representation to go and generate more information. So how do you actually do that, right? Like when you want to create one of these four demos we have, how do you go and understand the representation of, you know, speech? How do you understand text? How do you understand images? I think text is pretty common and it's pretty easy to build out, you know, a rack chatbot which might just take in text. But then if you wanted to do this for images, if you wanted to do this for tabular data, how do we do that? So that's what I'm going to be going into. So you might have seen this slide from Jensen's keynote again. What NVIDIA is doing to productionize some of these workflows is something called the Nemo Retriever. And what it looks like when you can chat with a uh, PDF is something like this. Like this is that same video zoomed in. Um, oops. Yeah, so this is kind of like what that video looks like, right? Like, right? When it's zoomed in, it shows, you know, some very complex text, tables, images, all sorts of things which we talk about on our blog post. But then, like, when you actually want to go and understand some of these things, you might want to use different sorts of models which we have available. Like, you know, like we have a lot of different models for image understanding, for table understanding, for going and converting these into representations which you can later go and query. And so that's something which this this might be what you know, like everyone is used to in the form of a conventional drag by slam. You'll have like a response. You'll have a prompt from the user which might potentially go through some guardrails. You have a data framework like Lam Chain and Lama Index, and you might be going and understanding it through, you know, custom data which is going in. You have text in, you have primarily text embedding models, and you have a vector database which you can go and query. And then you might send this to a foundation model and generate your response. But then the way you might do it if you had multimodality is that all almost the entire thing, like all of these components might change into multimodal components. So you'd have a data curator or a data, you know, pipeline, which might go and understand different sorts of data. You might have a multimodal embedding model. So then you might want to go and understand images and tables and so on. And then you have a vector database, wherein you might have one or more which are going to represent that data. So you might want to store image embeddings in a separate database. You might want to have text embeddings in a different one, table embeddings in a different one, and so on. And then finally, your input prompt. Like the user may not want to be, you know, typing in this response or a query. You might want to just chat, you know, interactively with an application. And again, you've seen some of that at the demos. And then when you want to generate your response, you might want this in the form of like a digital human, you know, something like that, a text response, tabular response to images, and so on. And so the way you would do that, right? Like this is that same image from the presentation which Jensen had done. But then you can go and identify. This is a caption for that graph. This is a graph. This is a you know heading or a passage. This is a table. And then you would have to go and send these into different sorts of models. So this table might go into a model which goes and converts it into a representation like uh, you know a data frame or pandas data frame. And then you can go and query that data frame and then extract the actual numerical data from that table. Similarly, for the graphs, you can convert it into, say, like a markdown graph. Or you can go and explain what specific, you know, information is there in that graph using something like Microsoft's uh, deep plot model or like Google's, I think Google's deep plot and Microsoft's Cosmos models and so on. So each of these would go through a different sort of model and then you would get some sort of representation for it. So I'm going to be showing something which we built out at NVIDIA for the purpose of, you know, demoing something, you know, for the purpose of sales. And let's just quickly go swap to that. Yeah, so this is like a live demo of something called an NVIDIA sales chatbot. So I'm going to start talking through what happened, right? First, I ask a question. It understands what drag means there. It says retrieval augmented generation. So that's something called query understanding and query expansion. 
it starts going and explaining, you know, retrieval augmented generation is this specific thing. And then how you build it, you can, you know, use our workflow on GitHub, you can use Nemo, Triton, and so on. And then it starts going and explaining it. It generates an audio response. So this is the multimodal aspect to it, right? You don't have just text, you also have audio. You have a fact check, like a guardrail system or something like that. That, you know, response which I was talking about is generated here. It gives you suggestions on follow-up questions. It also right now is giving you all sorts of text documentation, which is going to be telling you about like, what are these different things which I have referenced for this application. And that's the lag part of it, right? And then one final thing which I'm going to show is that, you know, how can you optimize? So let's see if I want to get some sort of image response. So right now, most of this is able to respond in text, but then let's see if I want to get image response. So let me select this and then put in drag chatbot, maybe like with the, uh, um, like so, with PR. I think some of you might have heard of this framework called PRT MLM. It's our TensorT large language model framework. And so if I ask, you know, a specific question about that, it might go into more details about faster transformer. It's built on top of that. It has custom, you know, kernels. It optimizes this, using, you know, all sorts of CUDA kernels and so on. And then like when you look at the end, right, you get the response. It generates the audio response. And the other thing is you can also do this where you can provide feedback. So then this feedback can later be used. If you wanted to fine tune this or improve this using reinforcement learning, you can use some of the feedback which users might be providing in this application. And then again, like more suggestions for feedback. You can also get presentations. So this is what I wanted to show. You can go and expand and respond with, you know, images. You can respond with Here's a tensor the LLM customer presentation, for example, where we're talking about all the details of why this is good for LLM entrance. So it's able to respond with text, with tables, with images, with, you know, obviously the regular audio responses. We also have a version where you can use this, like you can go and, you know, chat with it, like you can literally talk to it, and then that's an audio input. And so that's kind of how, like, most of this would work. So going back to the presentation, um, yeah, so we have a lot of open source models available at, I think this also may not have loaded. That's okay. So we have a lot of open source models which you can use to create like these complex applications at ai.nvidia.com or build.nvidia.com. And then when you use these and compose like these complex pipelines, you're able to generate like, you know, create some applications similar to this one. And similar to many of the demos which you might be seeing here. And what NVIDIA is doing, so we also have more resources. So one of them is a video. This is specifically for text, like a text track chatbot in five minutes. You can literally set this up very easily, very quickly using all of the NVIDIA APIs which we have. We also have a technical blog about why this is difficult, like understanding unstructured data across text, tables, charts, diagrams, and so on. And then like each modality has its own challenges. We also have details like of this, like this actual implementation which I showed is open sourced on our generative AI examples page. So I don't know if, like, why the whole link didn't show up, but if you go to NVIDIA's Gen AI examples, we have a lot of this experimental, you know, uh, logs and also like the code base available for all of you to try out. So yeah, I think with that, I've come to the end of the talk and like, feel free to ask any questions. Thank you very much, Rohan. Now, we'll, we'll be available to answer whatever questions you have I'm right here. So thank you so much for being here. That was a great talk. Nice to learn about the chatbot like going on right there. So yeah, you can search to it as well as that. Now we have one more presentation. This is the third day in a row. It is called the Great Prompt Off. Has anyone seen this before? Has anyone seen this? Okay, well, you're, you're in the right place to see it. We're going to set this up in just a couple of minutes. I'm going to go live and whatever it's done. Okay, thank you so much for being here on our final Thursday here in the GTC on behalf of Nivity. My name is Bo if you have any questions.